Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright, it is early, and it is time to get in the land of cryptocurrency. Let's take a look all the way across the market, starting out with gold. We'll take out NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance, Tether dominance, total three. We'll take a look all the way across the board. Really quick rundown today, and I am actually going to start it off. Oh, that's gold on the 15 minute. I'm going to start off with Bitcoin on the 15 minute, following up from our conversation yesterday, saying, hey, what's most likely to happen? Well, um, we were looking at the weekend trap box, which actually I find it interesting, this narrative that, hey, look, over the weekend, the market makers will sit there and trap people, build as much volume or... Uh, orders in the order books as possible so that come Monday they can fake people out to the downside or to the upside. So what did we start this week out with? And I'm going to get rid of some of these indicators here so it's a little bit easier to see. There we go. We started off with um, this trap over the weekend, a W formation to the downside, and we said, look, uh, what's most likely to happen? Well, the, the lines are working out so far. The prediction lines, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're working out so far. And we said, look, likely to make a run at the top side of the range, take out the stops right above this wick right here, and then come in and put in a higher low on the 15 minute time frame. I guess the only thing to worry about now is are we forming another M formation on the uh, on up here, right? Is Could this be considered an M formation? And for me, I would say the volume is probably not enough to call this an M. It looks more like a range um, and which would translate to just a... Now this looks a little bit more like an M if we do crack back below this middle wick here, I would actually expect a return back to the bottom side of the range on the hourly time frame and a test of this trend line one more time. Bitcoin thrown it to the upside, to the downside, and every other side just whipping people out of this market. But um, where would we expect a higher low to come in? That is the question we all want to know. Where do we expect the higher low to come in? Well, simply put, if you're bullish anywhere around the 382, which is this guy right here, um, oddly enough, right in line pretty much with that trend line, that's where you'd expect your major bounce to come from. And do we have any liquidity on the other side to lead us to believe that Bitcoin will continue to push to the upside and put the bears out of town and underground and yes we do we do have a batch of liquidity coming in at 38700 so right now for the market maker to push price to the upside is probably going to be the easiest route of peace and prosperity if Jerome Powell wants to make us some money remember he is going to be speaking on December 1st talking about interest rates inflation and the unemployment numbers as the Fed's job is to keep maximum employment and inflation at 2%. So um, I guess I'm about to take a little loss on uh, my Bitcoin trade. If we do trade anywhere below that wick here on the five minute time frame, and that's okay because losses are just part of the game. Part of the game and Am I going to take it? Am I going to take that loss? No, I'm going to wait for the bounce right here. We got nine minutes left on this hourly candle and we can get a bounce um, right from the 382 because we are in a bullish republic, sir. A bullish republic for Bitcoin. We're bullish for Bitcoin, not because we have the bull goggles, but because we have the statistics and the probabilities to back it up. And that's what technical analysis does is it is not an exact art it's more of a science no it's the opposite it's not an exact science more of an art form and um we have the higher term time frames to give us that bias 
starting out with the weekly time frame and it probably sounds boring 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 I'm gonna put on another chart actually because this one I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the piece so again where did the higher lows come in just last thoughts here on the 15 minute time frame um, you would expect your higher low to come in around the 0.5 at the very latest the 618 if we start to crack below the 618 I would expect a return to this trend line and yet again another higher low because um, you, you you still could potentially call this higher, well, it would be your first lower low on the 15 minute time frame, but on the four hour time frame, we're still maintaining the, well, potentially, um, you got a wick higher here. So yeah, we can call this higher highs and higher lows. Still fair enough here and just consolidating on the four hour, building some liquidity in there. Before they send it, uh, that's what I imagine. And the next thing I wanna bring up here is uh, is let's check out Dixie and I did hear an interesting theory here that uh, dollar was about to bounce off the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair again that is going to be your 618 fib where you expect those bull traps and bear traps to come in if the dollar does bounce I would expect gold to uh, play down and reject for the fourth time off of the $2,000 high. We're at $2,043 for gold. As the dollar has come down over the past few weeks, gold has taken a nice bit of a rally. It might be time to get short on gold again. Um, because everybody's getting bullish. You know, everybody's getting bullish at gold at $2,050 an ounce. Things should be racing to the moon for gold. Um, Bank of America calling for $3,000 gold. That's all I got on gold and um, nice higher low, higher high, um, you know, structure here though um, on a candle body closing basis. The weekly has not printed the higher high, two days and eight hours left. Let's see what the two day says. Volatility is still uh, expanding on the two day here and we're coming into kind of that last level of resistance. So. Until we uh, flip this big guy, uh, flip it to the upside, you'd want to see something like this for gold. If you want to maintain that bullish structure is something like that, higher low, and then we head up to the ultimate target for gold, which I do think is somewhere around uh, 2,300 bucks. If you want to get a little extended world crisis, I've been saying it all along, we need a world crisis for gold to crack 2,000 an ounce to, to you know, really uh, punch through there. And the only crisis on the map right now is going to be interest rates, banks failing, war, um, you know, the next presidential election. So lots of um, opportunities for crisis there. The next scandemic. Uh, we're coming into the holidays, though, and typically as stocks rally, and uh, we did say, hey, look, um, NASDAQ likely to make a new all-time high. Going in, uh, well, if we if we close anywhere above this wick here, that's, that's new all-time high territory for stocks. When stocks go up, gold typically goes down. Why would you want any gold rocks when your tech stocks, the top seven, are doing 70%. 70% the top seven stocks, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, um, Facebook. I don't know if Facebook's one of them. Target, definitely not one of them. Um, so taking a look at NASDAQ going up, dollar going down, gold going up. I think in the end, who do you think wins this fight? Who do you think wins? It's, it's probably going to be the good old same old same. The same old same and all, and, and that is uh, tech stocks. Tech stocks win, AI stocks win, and um, bringing up AI stocks really quick and other narratives besides Bitcoin. I'll take a look at the Tau coin, which is uh, ultimate blow off target here on Mr. Tau coin is at 416 for me, and that is using a wick to wick basis on this little teeny tiny ads asset called 
um, let's see, what is it called? It is called BitTensor Tau. It is the chat GBT of the chat GBT of crypto. Been one of the best performers, uh, well, for the year, in fact, since uh, its funding or founding here, uh, looks back in uh, March of 2023. This thing has been off to the races from, you know, 12 cents up to 258 bucks. And what does this thing do? Well, I guess it betends your tau. Um, open source protocol that powers a decentralized blockchain based machine learning network. Machine learning models train collaboratively and are rewarded in tau according to the information value they offer the collective. Tau also grants external access, allowing users to extract information from the network while tuning its activities to their needs. Ultimately, our vision is to create a pure market for artificial intelligence, an incentive arena in which consumers are and producers of this valuable commodity can interact in a trustless, open and transparent context. And I want to be completely clear, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. And this is believing in the pie in the sky. Why do I say that? Well, ChatGPT is the first to market with AI and generally, they're gonna kind of be the Google of, of you know, of AI. And this is just a, you know, in my opinion, where they believe about the skyscraper in the sky. And when, even though the fundamentals, uh, the underlying, you know, technology, highly esteemed technology behind it is not uh, quite there yet, you know, it, it's kind of like comparing a, a first grader to a full college graduated chat GPT. Um, needless to say, what did I want to bring up is the tokenomics. Max supply, 21 million. Um, they have a halving schedule, they have uh, miners, and the circulating supply is at 24%. So uh, around 5 million Tau coins out in existence, market cap at just a billion, wow, a billion dollars. So we've gone from the hundreds of millions to now over a billion dollars in Mr. Tau. The 24-hour volume here is at 6.9 million. So not a lot of liquidity in this and um, it's running out of steam on the daily time frame and uh, ultimately you know parabolic blow off tops how do they end well uh, they end parabolically parabolically at the 4236 Fibonacci retracement parabolic blow off top target um, and yeah why am I bringing this up well Axelar which we've been talking about which I guess I should have put all my money in this one uh, back here uh, when we called it out at about 50 cents. This is one of the competitors to Net Zero, uh, excuse me, to Chainlink and Net Zero, direct competitor to them. And they were listed in the white paper, XLR white paper. I believe it was for Singapore. CBDC. CBDCs. Ah, oh, reject all cookies. Secure cross chain communication web three. I want to see the article. Interesting. Oh, medium article. Interesting. Knowledge base on XLR. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's see if it is February 15th, 2022. So this thing's been around for a bit. This is a Spanish article. Okay, that doesn't help me. Um, XLR white paper, uh, XLR Singapore, uh, CBDC bridge. Anyways, if this thing is a competitor to uh, Mr. Chainlink, which has been flying to the moon, well, if it gets any love, any, uh, any benefit, um, I just think that in general, it'll have some upside opportunity uh, because there aren't a lot of competitors to Chainlink. And um, 
I, I wanted to find the article, Lydicky Pools for Bridges, Microsoft announces partnership with Crosschain. Oh, I think this is BS. July 11th, partnership with Crosschain protocol Axelar, and what is happening here? Microsoft and Axelar announced partnership. Don't trust Watch Guru. What is this? I'm going to have to go deeper in on this one and give you a little bit more of the source. But apparently this, this Axelar was listed. Um, and look at all the attention. Oh, this is Tau. Axelar was uh, listed in some white paper for some CBDC where they're going to use it to bridge and... Well, at least it's getting a bit of a bag pump so far. And what do we expect that this is going to do? Something like, interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to compare it to BitTensor Tau here, right? Um, and say that uh, a highly esteemed narrative like this, which is not quite caught on yet to the public. The general public doesn't even know about this coin. Um, I'd make it sound a lot more interesting, but I don't have the information with us right now. It bridges, uh, it bridges. What does Axelar do? Bridges, bridges. I'm going to bring you guys this article tomorrow. Tomorrow. So Axelar claims to deliver secure cross-chain communication for Web3. The protocol provides a decentralized network and tools to help builders of dApps with seamless cross-chain communication through its protocol suite, tools, and API. Axelar features three core components, decentralized network, software development kit, protocols for APIs, and a set of gateway smart contracts for cross-chain connectivity. I believe I read this to you guys um, back. Is the native, da -da 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 -da, the protocol also supports cross-chain transfer via their wrapped ERC-20 versions, including AVAX, E Phantom Glimmer Moonbeam. I want to check that one out actually. Matic, all these um, interesting da -da 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 -da, raise capital from Binance, Coinbase Ventures, Dragonfly Capital, Polychain Capital, and others. So, got some smart names behind that one. Analytics addresses by Holdings. Hmm. Whale Holdings. The whales got $20 million worth of this coin. Interesting. Addresses by time held. I wonder if I actually have a address just because I bought some XLR. Interesting. Um, all right, let's move on from this one. But if it does get a uh, meteoric shot, I just want to see from the candle bodies, right? If we hit the 1618 on the first pass, if we broke it for Mr. Tao. And using the candle bodies would be here. And you can see um, on the first pass, we did get a little sell. First pass got a sell down. So should we sell on the first pass? Take a little profit, get back in. I would say yes. I do want to test some of the liquidity on this bad boy here. I want to test the liquidity out as the order books are pretty shallow for this one. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up for that. I guess I'm going to check in on ETH Bitcoin as we've been following up on this and not a good sign for Ethereum. As we could be putting in, well, what looks like on the daily, a lower high, a sell signal, and low momentum, um, sorry, low volatility, low volatility, low volatility, declining volatility, coming up against that green 55, got a sell. If volatility begins to increase here, so very similarly, we talked about total three, and this is what we wanted to see for um, 
ETH to continue outperforming Bitcoin. However, that's not the case at the moment. So where do we start to lose hope for this one? Well, I would say, yeah, uh, this is the area, the middle wick right there. Um, not to say Ethereum is dead or anything like that. It's just to say, here's what Ethereum against Bitcoin is going to be doing here in the short term. In the short term. About to get waxed. All right, here we go. Gold, no, Bitcoin dominance here. Taking a leg up, that's what you would expect as Ethereum Bitcoin goes down. And then total three, um, we want to avoid this scenario. This scenario, uh, you know, closing anywhere below this pivot, I think I'm going to, I'm going to call it an altcoin dead season for the medium term. Okay, uh, good good ideas to be, you know, keeping a close eye upon that. Checking in on Ethereum, which does look to be uh, perhaps putting in a bit of an M formation right here. And any kind of a closure back below, even yesterday's low, I'm going to say quick move down to the green 55 and refills this candle coming in at 1886, lining that up with the heat map. And we did have a general bias for Bitcoin to have one more push to the upside. So is this the fake out before the breakout? Um, only time will tell. Only time will tell. And I am going to pause it. Dang it. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. Oh, it is paused already. No, it's not paused. I'm pausing it. Why? Well, I have my reasons. I'm having my reasons right about now. In general, stocks up, dollar down. Bitcoin just having a short-term pullback in the beginning of the day. Got everybody. That's what they do. They wake it up for America time. Right? Everybody gets all bullish on Bitcoin. And this is exactly where you'd expect that higher low to come in, right off that purple 200. If we start to break below there with volume, volatility is increasing. All we want to see is a flip back up above 38,000. So we need a bounce here. And can CMEs, CMEs give us empty, uh, any reliableness? And notice actually that this is the gap level I don't know if you guys followed the show and make sure you guys like and subscribe if you're enjoying some of the content you're getting some value from the background information so you can make better decisions about your crypto hey i hope uh i hope it is worth your time but it doesn't take me two cents to give you my thoughts on the market and that's what i do every day and kind of give you the most um interesting market trends that i can find in the land of cryptocurrency even across traditional markets uh when the timing is right Anyways, there seems to be a shift in the narratives from Bitcoin, excuse me, from Ethereum to Solana. As Solana is the cheaper and faster way. So we'll take a look at Solana here really quick. But um, back on to gap theory for a moment here. Uh, we did have this gap coming in from the weekend. Was it from the weekend? My days are getting mixed up here. Why does this look different? Sunday market open, yeah, that's that's the difference. There was a gap down. We filled the gap, punched through it, retested, bounced off it. So really, this is this is going to be the line in the sand for Mr. Bitcoin. Otherwise, probably going to run it back down to the bottom side of the range and test out that uh, trend line we had been discussing. See if there's anything more obvious on CMEs here as, uh, well, CME open interest is shooting through the roof. Professional traders coming back into the market for the first time in a long time. I don't have the chart to show you, but um, open interest in the CME futures is quite um, higher than it has been. Okay. So is this the area I would expect for Bitcoin to come down uh, to? Yes, this is going to be the area. 
right in here. I wonder if there is a gap on a smaller term time frame that uh, perhaps the market has not filled yet. Would you call that a gap? Here on the four hour at 29,830. Close enough is close enough. And um, yeah, I would, I would say there is a four hour gap all the way down there. There's a four hour gap right there. And that actually, uh, those would be my bounce targets for Bitcoin as at some point we are going to take that leg down. I'm going to put these in here for no apparent reason, no apparent reason at all. And just heading back onto the liquidity heat map here, you can see for Ethereum downside target 1816 and 1648 liquidity, uh, mostly to the upside at 2150. The brighter yellow, so um, is this just a little fake out punch to the downside before they punch it to the upside? I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, this kind of price action happen, what seems to happen during the day. Um, well, not not yesterday, right? Not yesterday as, oh yeah, as Asia, so, uh, uh, uh. as the market opened up in the US yesterday, we did get a bit of a pump yesterday. And we are going into, this is the dead gap zone here for the US. So we're coming into the opening of the market here in about 15 minutes, I believe. We will get that first hourly candle closure. So um, in the dead gap zone, they can throw it to the downside. And we did fill the middle of this candle. This is the the last area of uh, hopium, 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 hopium. This is the hopium uh, if we're going to hold it up for today. Otherwise, uh, breaking back down below there, probably going to see a greater move down to about 36.3, uh, or sorry, 36.260, lining it up with the HPR range, the range getter, the range getter. Um, not really seeing anything on the hourly there. What do we see on the 15 minute here? And this could give me the, the bitty bitty bias for a bit of a bounce here. If my internet will populate everything. I wonder if my voice is actually matching up to the sound today. I had to use a new recording device as my old one is giving me some hassle, some hassle. And the HPDR is not populating, so I think I think that's enough for today. I did say I wanted to check in on Mr. So Tau Narrative Coin, Axel Narrative Coin. Um, sideways and up, very little volume. Good luck if you buy into this, if you can get out of it. All right. Uh, how's our coin stocks doing? Coin. Looks like a mission to Mars to me there. On a mission to Mars for Mr. Coin. Breaking it out. Uh, CRV, I did want to check in on this one. Not looking healthy, not, not where I want to see this one. Um, maybe time to cut some bait on that one. I will get back to you on that one. Sushi is um, another one putting in It'll be a massive drive of bearish divergence if this does play out. Um, you know, perhaps a move back to the bottom side of the range here at uh, so any kind of a closure below 5646, and I'd be looking for a swift move back down to 49 cents on that one. Casper taking the leg down, 3% down at the moment. As Bitcoin is just playing a little bit of a touch and go to the bottom side of the uh, not the bottom side of the range. Uh, was well, the bottom side of the 15 minute range. So short term pullback in the dead gap zone. What do we have coming up? AVAX taking a look broadly uh, all around the market as everything is kind of doing the same, the same little belly cry, right? Which is popped above the uh, weekly trend change, weekly trend change. Yep. Popped above. That's, that's looking bullish for uh, AVAX. So far, so good there. As long as we don't close back below the trend line, probably going to lift off 
Next target, uh, 29 cents. Glimmer is the one. If the Atom ecosystem uh, does turn around, well, great potentials for closures back above this pivot, and I'd be targeting a quick move back to the top side of the range there at uh, 49 cents, which I think really, um, in general, crypto is going to come back with a fierceness like we've never seen before. What does that mean? Well, potentially, it's time to put in another Bitcoin long off the 15 minute time frame. I'm just going to show you, excuse me, on the five minute time frame. Remember, the higher term time frames do rule the market, and I don't want to look at Glimmer right now. By the way, uh, this one's only available on KuCoin that I can find. <clears throat> the other one, Mr. Neutron, glad I'm checking in on this one, part of the Polkadot, I believe, Polkadot um, ecosystem. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on this one. But this is another Axelar type coin, something that's... Um, Got a good narrative behind it. Has had a bit of a run up, a run down, and now just looking to hold this, this trend line as we are wicking back down to the, well, wick to wick. Let's use the wicks here. Back to the 382. So back below there, it looks like a bull trap. Bull trap, need to hold on today for Mr. Neutron for Mr. Nimi, uh, Jimmy Neutron here. And this is getting a little bit long here, but I'm just gonna show you again what I'm looking at on Bitcoin in the five minute time frame. From the high to the low, you've got to run into the 0.5 FIB, which is the 50% retracement. Typically you do get a bounce from this area. Typically you will get a bounce from this area it is only a failure when we start to close back below uh, the 618 at 37,450. Let's see if there's any liquidity on the heat map at, excuse me, on the liquidation levels map. The liquidation levels map. So people are net long right now, so Long's getting liquidated, 1.7 million, very little open interest on Bitcoin right now. I would say at about 64, what is that, 6,400? That's just small, that 64, um, does it tell you what the calculation is, is the question. 60, so we're at 55,000, or 63,000 net long positions, whatever that means. Um, let's check out. So why am I bringing this up? Well, the liquidity zones, we just popped through this one, 680 million right there, or 680,000, wow. So we're talking about, usually it's in, yeah, the next batch of liquidity is down there at 700 million. So a quick swoop down, back down to the bottom side of the trend line does kind of line up for a bounce here. If it is going to bounce, you can see it on the one minute time frame. Why am I seeing this as a bounce on Bitcoin, but I'm not seeing it on my chart like that? Maybe I need to rerun the report. Looks completely different. Oh, there it is. There it is, here's what I'm looking at. Okay, on the five minute time frame, and I'm drawing a trend line back. There's too many trend lines on this chart, so let's look at another one. Is this the same one, is the question. So from the ultimate high to the low, boom. 
And that's the trend line uh, coming in right there. So could maintain some higher low structure as long as we're holding this trend line. I think we're good in the short term for Bitcoin. That being said, that lower level of liquidity is going to line up here below that trend line. So did they do a quick knife down, grab this liquidity here, six, seven hundred. $800 million worth of liquidity. I don't think that is correct. I'm going to pull up the open interest indicator here. Open interest. Boom. I want to go to Binance open interest. I believe that's where I had the settings. And open interest did take a big leg up. Interesting. But not on the hourly time frame. We're still at relatively low levels, but overall open interest is coming up. And we're seeing this coming in at 85,000 in open interest. I wonder what exactly that means. Um, is there a definitions tab? Settings. I know there is a definitions tab somewhere. Anyways, I gave you my bias for the short term. Um, you know, can we run it down to the bottom side of this range? Yes, absolutely. Do I think that's the most likely thing to happen right now? No. Could I be wrong? Yes. Could I absolutely be wrong? And where do our kind of idea of a higher term time frame uptrend uh, get canceled out? Very specifically, I don't know if I can be very specific on this one, but I'm going to give you my best analogy. I, I can't handle all the squiggly lines. I can't handle it. Give me my other chart. Give me my other chart. Bitcoin on Bybit. Even that, even that, we were talking about these trend lines coming back from this pivot right here. And we said what? We had it drawn a different way, drawn a different way. What is the different way? Well, here's the different way. Okay. That's where I've got the trend line coming in. Now, Bybit's probably a little more egregious, but I do find that uh, this may be our new parallel channel. This may be our new parallel upwards facing sloping channel, which can result in, well, a test of both sides more often than not. What am I talking about? Boom. Does this even line up? Is the question. Is close enough close enough? Do you guys say that lines up? Do you vote? Vote below. Do my lines match up? We're above the 50% retracement, and yeah, that's where I'd say where we start to lose this one on the daily is below 35.7. 35.7, and uh, probably going to get a swift move back down to retest this area. Retesting this area, 30% correction, that's only 17%. So what makes a lot more sense is if we pump to the upside and then get our 35% correction down to about 31.5. That's what I'm planning for. Don't say you heard it from me. You heard it from the internet webs, the magic internet money land. This is why we follow Bitcoin. And if you know Bitcoin's got a chance to pump one more time to the upside, well, that means some of the altcoins are going to follow. So could we get a little deviation, something like that? Absolutely. Um, but what I would say here is that I'm looking for the move to get going here sooner than later. And why is that? Well, daily volatility is now kind of compressed. 
and I got the ugliest squiggly lines this side of town. And I'm going to bring them back. There we go. Um, I'm going to bring this back, bring this back. And just notice, you know, Bitcoin just stair stepping it onwards and upwards on the daily time frame. Don't fight the daily downtrend. And you're going to have hidden bullish divergence coming back from. Is that a clear stop and reverse? No, this is though. And I'd say that is. Definitely is. Um, higher low. You know, this is just one one push to the upside, one push to the upside. And these things go in waves of three, waves of three. Could you call this the first wave, second wave? You know, we are due for a correction at some point to the tune of about 30 percent. What is going to be the icing on the cake? What pushes the market to the upside or the downside? There's three events coming up. You got the Bitcoin having the spot ETF now getting pushed to January 10th. And um, and then you got the stock market making new all time highs. That would be for the glory of Bitcoin, in my opinion. Um, stock market are, starts to break down, warning signs flashing. And if the dollar starts to break up, if the dollar starts to move to the upside, that'll be your first warning sign. And we were talking about it at the beginning of last month or when this rejected here we said hey look above this box death and despair below peace and prosperity and below this box continued altcoin rally party to the upside i hope this made sense guys hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you have yourself a blessed and highly favored day Check out the links in the description below if you want to learn how to trade, if you want to learn anything about technical analysis. If you want to start trading, check out all the links in the description below. Have yourself a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.